If you use an iPad with ForeFlight in the airplane, you can bring it with you in the simulator too. Hey everyone, Clay from Claviation.com. We're working our way down the coast of Florida for our trip down to the Bahamas. On the first leg, we departed Augusta, Georgia and navigated only by pilotage and dead reckoning, using only a map and some calculations along with what we saw outside of the airplane to navigate. Our second leg was VOR navigation, with a diversion from Savannah over to Hilton Head for the weather. In the last leg, we plugged our route into the Garmin 430 GPS and made it here to Jacksonville Executive Airport, KCRG. Today we're going to use our iPad with ForeFlight to navigate. It's a great tool in the airplane and the features in ForeFlight are seemingly endless. This isn't designed to be a tutorial on the ins and outs of ForeFlight, but by connecting it to the simulator, it functions nearly exactly as if you were in the air. It's a great way to learn and practice until you're familiar with it. Let's look at some of the benefits of connecting ForeFlight to X-Plane 11 and look at some of the cool features that it brings to the table as well. First, let's start by getting the iPad and X-Plane talking to each other. To start off in X-Plane and load up a flight, make sure you get a flight loaded up. We're here at CRG and we've selected our airplane. First, we'll go up to Settings and down to Network over here in the middle. This is going to pull up several different uh, items, but over here in the iPhone and iPad section, we open this up and there are several different options. It's under this tab that says For Flight Wing X Pro Flight Plan Go or Sky Demon. And there are two options underneath here. First of all, to get these talking to each other, you need to make sure that this computer and your iPad are on the same network. It doesn't matter if it's wired or, or Wi-Fi, it's just it needs to be on the same network. I found that if you click broadcast to all copies of ForeFlight, um, it's going to broadcast to each different device. If you've got an iPhone and an, and an iPad, um, it'll both show up on there. And you don't have to input any sort of IP address. So I would try this one first. That's kind of simpler. Um, if you click transmit to a single copy of ForeFlight, um, you're going to have to look up the, iP the IP address on your iPad and put that in, which isn't so hard to do. but um, you can actually find that right in ForeFlight. So uh, by clicking broadcast to all copies, we should be able to open ForeFlight and see that. So let's actually click on this transmit to a single copy and see how we go through that option. In ForeFlight, if we actually go to more with little dots and go down to devices, it's going to show that you've got, in this case, it says one connected. Um, so it's gone ahead and connected, which is great, and I think that's because my IP address I've already plugged in. If you click the little I up in the corner, it's actually going to pull up the IP address of the particular uh, iPad. So in this case, the Wi-Fi uh, IP address is what I've got entered in there, and that's going to show this connected box. We could also do the same thing if we uncheck this and click broadcast to all copies of ForeFlight, in which case now my iPad shows that I've got two connected because I'm also running an iPhone on the same network. So either way you want to do that will be A-OK -okay, and it's simple as that. Now they're talking to each other. And click Done. Now over on the iPad, let's go over to the Maps page and let's click on the box at the top that says Aeronautical. I don't know how it's going to have you loaded up but I always like to have US VFR sectional selected and then I actually go back and I take Aeronautical off. And that way I've just got a VFR sectional uh, going for the purposes of our flight today. Um, now what we should see if we zoom in is this little blue dot is showing us where our location is. And sure enough, it's right here at Craig. One of the things we can do on here is to set an aircraft profile. And that's really going to be helpful for some of the things we're going to explore on this flight. So if we click on these more dots in the lower right hand corner, it's going to open up our options again. The third option is aircraft. And if we click that, it's going to show any aircraft you might have already plugged in, but click the little plus to add one. We can actually add an aircraft um, that is the flight simulator aircraft. And in this case, our tail number on the side of it happens to be uh, November 978 Alpha Papa. So we can put that in there. And then we can go down to aircraft type. And we can actually search Cessna. There's all Cessna aircraft. We're a 172S. So let's scroll down. S Skyhawk. There it is. Let's click that. 
that's going to auto populate a few things in there. Um, you could go in and put the aircraft color and home airport and everything like that if you want to. But um, what we're really worried about here is the um, the performance profiles option, which we can click that and add custom performance profile. So um, we can actually go in and put for our climb. Now I've I've come up with some values that I think are pretty good estimations for this particular aircraft that, that we can use for things. So climb true airspeed, I put 80. Climb fuel per hour, I put 10. Climb rate, I put 800. Climb, I'm sorry, cruise true airspeed 115. That's what we've been using. Cruise fuel per hour, I'll put 9. And we can put descent figures in if we like as well. Nice cruise descent of 115. Uh, fuel per hour, um, 9 is what I had. And descent rate of 500 feet per minute is what we're usually going to do there. So we can go ahead and uh, now that we've got that in there, profile name, we can just call sim. How about that? Um, and we can go ahead and click make, def make default if we'd like, default performance profile, if we want to use this regularly on our simulator. So now we've got that in there, um, and that's going to help us once we get going here in a few minutes. Now let's go back to our map, and before we get cranked up and going here, the last thing we need to do is go ahead and put our route into ForeFlight. So the route that, we've, that I've selected here is um, starting us out at KCRG. And much like the GPS, you can use more than just um, more than just airports. Let's go ahead and put this in S G J. That's a V O R. The Bully Intersection B U L L I. K D A B is an airport. K T I X is an airport. K M L B also an airport, and then K F. PR is where we want to end up. So if we just type those in at the top, click search, now our route shows up. So that's where we're going to fly today. So let's get in the air and see what we can get into. Now that we're climbing out, we can see our airplane on our iPad has shown up and it's showing us our location moving away from the airport. In the first video, the first leg that we did, we were relying on looking outside and our pilotage skills to determine exactly where we were on the map. And it almost feels like cheating because now ForeFlight is superimposing our aircraft right on the sectional chart. You always know exactly where you are. Now that we're up in the air and established on our course, let's look at a few things that ForeFlight can do for us here in the simulator. The first thing we can do is to turn on our little speedometer icon at the top here, and that's going to pull up this little bar at the bottom that shows us data about how our airplane is moving. And this is just pulling data from the simulator just like it would pull GPS data. It's processing it the same way. So it's showing our distance to our next waypoint, showing how long we think we're going to be in the air for this leg or for this route that we've got plugged in, what our ground speed is, our GPS altitude, our magnetic track, vertical speed, lots of good things there. What we can do also now is pull open our flight plan, which is the FPL key. It's going to show our list of waypoints that we've created. Now one thing you need to make sure you've done is to go over here and you can see the airplane in the upper left says November 978 Alpha Papa. Make sure that, you've have, that you click on that and select the appropriate airplane, uh, the simulator airplane. Otherwise, it's going to be using potentially some other airplane's data. Um, down here at the bottom of this box, if we click Nav Log, it's actually going to pop open this navigation log that's going to show us um, really good information. It's actually at this point counting down to our next checkpoint, and it's showing us what our magnetic um, our heading is. And so we can actually adjust this accordingly in the simulator to make sure we're staying right on track. Ultimately, if we're a little off course, um, that doesn't so much matter in this case. So that's some really good information for keeping us on track. As we approach the St. Augustine Airport and the VOR we're navigating to, SGJ, 
let's take a look at our weather settings and make this a little more realistic. If we open up our settings and go to weather and customize, you can actually go down here to the bottom where it says weather mode and take it from manually configured to match real world conditions. At this point it's downloading the weather at the very top and you can choose a refresh rate. You can either click refresh manually if you'd like, if things have changed, or you can choose a refresh rate anywhere from 15 minutes to 120 minutes. I'll keep it on 15 minutes so we get nice up-to-date information. And then let's click done and apply changes. Now at this point, the simulator has downloaded real-world weather conditions um, that are actually happening where we're flying right now. You can see we got a little wind gust that just knocked us, so it must be windy. Now, it actually, does that knock the autopilot off? No, we didn't get a warning. It's just kicking us around some. So we can actually now benefit from the real world settings and figure out exactly what those settings are in ForeFlight. So let's go over here. And in this US VFR sectional box at the top where we can select our different options, let's click Flight Category. And that turns on a little dot at each airport that shows what the weather station is. And if we click that dot, just touch it, it's gonna open up information at that airport. In this case, it's pulling METARs. Now this is real-time METAR that's happening um, that ForeFlight is talking to. Um, so right now we can see that SGJ, we've got um, variable six knot winds, 10 statute mile visibility, uh, clear skies. So what we can do is we can actually now go in the simulator, which is you know, pretty nice, uh, that's a pretty nice weather. I mean, there's really not much, whole, whole lot going on there. So I don't know what that wind kick was that we got. But we can actually kind of verify that if we want to tune in uh, SGJ and listen to their weather. Their ATIS is 119.625. So let's go over and put that in here into our comm. 119. In the last episode, I showed how to um, set these keys so you can quickly change these frequencies, which really helps instead of having to click so much. Let's click this over, active into COM1. St. Augustine Information Hotel, 1900 Zulu weather. Wind calm, visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 20, dew point 6. Altimeter 3015. Arriving runways 1306, departing runways 1306. Advise on initial contact, you have hotel. So that's really close weather. Let's get that out so we don't hear that again. Um, the weather is really close, and in my experience, I found that if there's cloud layers that are really close together, um, X Plane won't grab those exactly, but it's really, really close, which means you can actually use now. Um, you can turn on some radar. I don't know that we have. Let's go back up to this little selection box and turn on our radar if we just hit composite radar and see if we've got any weather. I can't imagine there's any weather um, happening right here. No, nothing. So, But if we had the weather, we're going to have the real world radar showing um, somewhat real conditions to what we're showing in airplane. Now, obviously, X plane's not pulling radar data so it's not going to get the cloud masses exactly how it is but if we've got some weather we're flying through um, that we would be flying through in the real world or some low ceilings that we're descending through to get into an airport we're going to have the same thing mimicked um, with basically through those METARs and those cloud layers and the winds which is really kind of cool. You can see now that we've passed SGJ that our old uh, leg has turned to kind of a yellow orange color and now we um, have uh, magenta out in front of us. So if we click flight plan again, we can see we are now going from SGJ to the Bully intersection. And we've got uh, about 11 minutes of cruise going. So let's fly along and join some of the scenery along the coast here near St. Augustine. Now that we're approaching the Bully intersection, Another feature we can play with is the airport information that we can obtain in ForeFlight. By pressing the same dot on the airport down here at Flagler Executive that gave us our weather, we can actually click over to the Info tab and get information about the airport. That's really handy. It's got our ATIS information if we want to get the uh, 
frequencies for the common uh, traffic advisory frequency, ground tower, unicom. It's got the uh, local approach frequencies. It has basic runway information, airport facility directory page, the whole page out of the airport facility directory you can pull up, which is now called the chart supplement, which is kind of handy. And that's got everything you need to know in there. So lots of great resources. But one of the things that you might find helpful at X-Plane is under this info tab again, if I get back to it, you can actually pull up a taxi diagram of the airport. So if you're landing at a particular airport, you can write, just go right to this taxi diagram and it's going to pull up a new plate and it's going to show you exactly what that diagram looks like. So you could say, well, you know, hey, if I'm going to be landing over here at runway 24, um, then I can hopefully make taxiway Charlie and then take Charlie over to Delta and then Delta over to um, the hangars over in that area. So some really good information there. Um, and again, ForeFlight is so incredibly useful. There are just um, hours of information that we could talk about that you could actually obtain from that. One more little thing um, before we let you go here is one other little technique. You know, you're always thinking when you're flying, well, what would happen if I lose my engine right now? And we've actually got a really cool, ForeFlight does a new thing for this. If you press uh, up at the top left of the screen, the little settings gear. And this is why it's important to have had this information plugged in um, that we plugged in for the aircraft settings. If you go down, you can actually click Glide Advisor. And it's got glide settings at 65 knots, 9 to 1, which, are the, which is the glide ratio for our particular airplane. Now this ring pops up around the airplane. That shows us, even factoring in the given winds and the terrain that's around us and our altitude, how far our airplane should be able to glide if we were to lose our engine. So what that says is, right now, if we were to lose our engine, pull our mixture out and simulate it, would we be able to make it to Flagler Executive Airport? Well, without, without that glide advisor, you might think, well, yeah, maybe we can. Um, in this case, the glide ring says otherwise. And of course, I wouldn't want to rely on that too heavily because I, that, that assumes that you maintain a perfect best glide speed and that the airplane glides exactly as it's supposed to. But I know right now that as we approach the Bully intersection, uh, it's looking like once we cross Bully, if I were to lose my engine, I could put it down at Flagler and be okay. So that's a really nice little feature to have as well. This is a great time for the subscribe checklist. Like this video, let me know you're watching. Subscribe to the channel. Keep up to date with all the videos that come out each week. And comment on the video. Let me know your thoughts if you feel so inclined. We're going to keep flying down the coast here and working our way down to South Florida before heading out over the ocean towards the Bahamas. In the next video, we're going to talk about the air traffic control system in X-Plane and see how you can get the most out of that. Until then, enjoy your flying.